Hey, welcome to the Gold Mining 2003 final part, part three. And uh, I'm just going to do another pictorial here, and this will be the last one in this series. And this nugget that we got seeing right here, this is actually one of the old family nuggets, and it's the uh, first nugget that I sold out of uh, great grandpa's collection that my uh, stepdad wanted me to sell from the uh, Morning Glory Load Mine. And so, continuing on from where we were in the last video, um, Arkansas Steve and I, we walked way upstream and hiked in our little two and a half inch proline dredge. And as you can see, we set it up the same way as we set up the four inch down in the mud hole, but now we're, we're way upstream. We, we hiked in quite a ways upstream and uh, we set it up in this hole. And we're down here dredging this little spot where we'd, we'd uh, sampled and found all kinds of gold. And, once again, there was mercury in here too, but uh, most of the mercury that we find was uh, a little bit farther down. So we got some pretty decent gold out here. And if you look at the dredge sitting right there, you can just barely see what we have holding down on this one end is uh, <laughs> one of those old riffles out of the hydraulic sluice boxes from the 1800s, one of the old metal riffles. And I, you know, we found a number of those down there over the years and taken them out and we left. It usually takes at least two people to carry them out because they're so heavy. And this is just a, a shot up the hillside that shows um, that it's all tailings. It's all new growth within the last hundred years. You know, and that was all tailings from the hydraulic mines. Everything that we're working right there, everything around us that's surrounding us is all tailings from the hydraulic mines. There's a better picture of the bar. And so I was up here dredging in the hole off there to the left of the dredge where that white boulder is. And you can see that there is cobbles up there on the left hand side where the actual old tailings had fallen down. And what happened was I hit a spot in there and all of a sudden we had mercury to start pouring out of the side of the wall. And I was right there and I, I couldn't get anything underneath it so it just came down into the hole where we were at. And we ended up getting a sucker bottle and going down and taking it down to bedrock. And uh, we sucked about half a sucker bottle full of mercury just right off the right off the bottom. And it had a little bit of gold in the bottom, but mostly it was just free mercury that came out of the tailings from the hydraulic mines. So that should give you an idea of just how contaminated some of these old hydraulic tailings are like here in the Molokov. So I went ahead and I dug back in there. We pulled all the rocks out of there where the mercury came down from. And uh, we got it all out of there, you know, which is which is one of the things I just enjoy doing is when I find a spot that's contaminated, I get the mercury out of there. And, you know, you got to figure it was half a sucker bottle and that's I didn't weigh it. It was at least four ounces and we just took the gold out of it. And then uh, I got rid of the rest of it. I gave it away. You know, I gave it away to a friend of mine who works for a chemical company. He took it down there and they're like, yeah, just give us all that you want. And they said they'd take every bit that I had, so I would I would always take it down and give it to him, and he was one of the big wigs in the chemical company, and he would take it and they would, uh, you know, go ahead and refine it from there after I had you know retorted it and got the gold out of it. And this is a picture looking upstream, and this is just a nice waterfall coming down, and and we went through and pretty much cleaned this out with a fine tooth comb over the years. With uh, you know, I found my my first nuggets metal detecting with a metal detector down here, you know, and I mean, I really went over this entire area with a fine tooth comb until it got to the point where, you know, when we first started out, we would, we would come out with at least a half ounce or more every three or four hours. And, uh, it eventually got down to where you couldn't even pull a quarter ounce out in a day or more. So, you know, we pretty much had cleaned it out, but you know, for about 10 or 15 years, we really, really worked at this spot and, uh, it worked out really well. There's a good picture of Arkansas Steve, you know, working the same way that we always do, way up on the bedrock. And we always look for bedrock, you guys. You know, you want to be out there mining. Well, you know what? You got to mine in a spot where you can get to bedrock. And you can see that tailings pile right there of what we were sucking out. Yeah, it's good old pictures, Arkansas Steve and I. And this is one of our funnest trips that we made, man, was just hiking that material and hiking everything up a couple sets of waterfalls up into the... Uh, that deep canyon, man, and there was no way to get up in there but start at the bottom and just walk your way up. But, you know, when we first started going in there back when I was a kid, 
you could actually drive in to this spot where we were at now almost within within uh, 50 feet, maybe a little bit more. And then over the years, it eventually just washed down and down and down and down. In fact, it used to be an old mine up on the where they actually had a road going straight across, went right into an old mine back in those days too that an old timer used to work. And finally one day, uh, they just went ahead and blasted it shut when, uh, you know, he had some kind of stuff coming out of there. He came out to lunch and uh, the whole mine just started you know, getting gassy, and he cast it came out at the right time, so he just went ahead and blasted it shut. And that's where I found my first um, gold nugget was right here in this vein. Um, you couldn't even see it. It was under, actually underneath the quartz, and it was coated in mercury. And there's a spot. You can see where I've kind of broke it out, that little black spot in the middle. That mercury, that nugget was right there in the center. It was, it was uh, oh, maybe five-sixteenths of an inch around it was actually almost you know an egg-shaped nugget and there's another shot i always used to use this as wallpaper because it just looked like a natural smile you know mother nature was definitely smiling at me that day i found all kinds of nuggets up there my first time i went down there with a metal detector and just started going through it and just really maximized it and we did the same thing up here as you can look from the box and the hoses there off the power jet are totally out of the water. We would run that hole down until there was nothing there. And it would take up there, because the hole was so much smaller, maybe, you know, a half hour or 40 minutes for it to clean up. That's one thing you guys got to realize. We're not down here getting in eight hours a day of dredging. You know, we, we work for 15, 20 minutes until we're out of water. And then we got to wait for an hour until it fills back up. And that's when, uh, this was the last year that we only used one dredge at a time or one set of dredge pumps. The next year, in 2004, we started using twin nine horsepower motors downstream and we built a separate pond so we could recirculate the water by pumping it back upstream. So we weren't getting just in maybe two to three hours of actual work a day. And the other time we were just stacking cobbles or sitting around and just waiting for the water to fill back up. But we still got amazing amounts of gold this year in 2003. And that little proline dredge, man, that was a good dredge, and it was perfect for backpacking in. We probably didn't need to take the floats, but we weren't sure. We wanted to go up another couple sets of uh, waterfalls, but we stopped there because uh, we just kept sampling the holes on the way up, and we found gold immediately sitting right there on the bedrock, right there where the uh, that riffle's sitting, where the end of the riffle is. We found a whole bunch of gold there. We started up there on that side and worked our way down and around into the very bottom of that crack to find more gold. When we got down to the bottom, we found... Uh, quite a bit more cold down there and we're talking about a little two and a half inch dredge man we were actually throwing most of the material out by hand and just using the uh, uh, actual uh, dredge hose just to clean the bedrock itself we were shoveling it out and throwing it out for the most part because you can shovel faster than you can dredge with a two and a half and look at all the rocks in there and all the cobbles you know as we worked our way down to the bottom of that bedrock and you you can't see you can see it right there on the very right hand side in that bottom crack that's actually bedrock showing that we cleaned all that off and the stuff up behind it is uh, where we were dumping tailings and moving stuff around and right there on that bedrock where the old riffle is we found a whole bunch of gold right there to the left of that in that crack where it just comes down right before it widens out there was a whole line of gold in those cracks and uh, I ended up pulling about three and a half ounces out of there over a, a period of, you know, about seven or eight hours one day when I walked down there. Um, I don't remember what year that was, but it was uh, probably three or four years before this, probably around 2000, maybe a little bit before. And there's another shot looking downstream. And look at all the exposed bedrock. And this is one thing you guys got to do is, you know, a lot of the exposed bedrock you're going to find nowadays has been worked really, really hard by everybody. So that's why, like, when you see our, our movies at the Bear, we are exposing bedrock. Now, down here, we're not even close to bedrock with a two and a half. And this is coming up towards the end of the year. So Tom and Steve and I went down. We decided to try opening up a hole to see what we could do, you know, get a hole ready for... Uh, for the next year so we came down for the four inch so we came down here with a two and a half and opened up that hole this is the same place that um catfish mike and i were working 
in the beginning of the other video, part two. And so we opened all this up and we went down. We found all kinds of gold down there because we, we kind of saved that spot till the end of the year because we were getting good gold in the main hole. But we definitely wanted to pull back to this spot and get the gold out of here that we had found at, at collected behind those boulders before it blasted out the next year. So this is what we do. We come down here, we build the dam like he's doing right there so we could fill it up with water. And the higher we built the dam, the more water would go in there and the longer we could work. But look how dark that water is. You can't see the hoses as soon as it goes underwater. And this is with black water diving because there were times we had the hole down 10 or 15 feet in different spots over the years to where when you went down there underwater, you were completely and totally in black water. And even if you tried to tap your finger in front of your face on the mask, you couldn't see your hand or your finger or anything. You're just working in pitch black, total darkness, dirty water like that. And old Tom, he always did hate computers. <laughs> Especially back in the day. He's got one nowadays. He finally gave in. You know, but... uh <laughs> Uh, sure, it always cracked me up. I had to have a picture of that. Yeah, I had used to have the Suburban. I'd take it down there. I still have that Suburban, but I don't drive it too much anymore. You know, just kind of sits there with the prices of gas and stuff. I couldn't really sell it for what I really wanted to get out of it. and So I just kind of left it sitting up here. I use it as another ranch vehicle for driving up on the hill and stuff sometimes or yeah, one of these days I'll have a need to register it again. When I bought that Hummer, it kind of put the uh, Suburban to the back seat. So, Yeah, a lot of us good pictures just working that hole, working that hole. We were getting all kinds of gold from right behind that rock right there. And, you know, it's an all completely and totally enclosed area we're working in. The water's not going to go down into a stream anywhere. The water goes underground right there. It just stops. Which is one of the reasons we started working down there is because that's where the water started going underground. So that was really as far as we could work. As far down away from the waterfall that we could work from because after that the water just disappeared. And here we are now working with a 4 inch. The pro line and you know what we used to do we had that gas compressor on there even though we didn't use it down here so most of the time i would take the belt off the compressor just so it wouldn't be running you know needlessly and just providing air for nothing you know but there was always one of us if you look at that there was always one of us shoveling and moving the tailings or stacking stuff up and you know and it was a, a nice confined area where we couldn't do any damage to the environment all we were doing was collecting the gold and the mercury out of there because there was just so much back then and you know, little did we know that right there we were actually on top of the old sluice box with the riffles and all that we ended up pulling out. You know, and you can watch that in my hydraulic mining video, part six, where we got the high banker down there. And we were just going at it and pulling riffles. And then next thing you know, the water came through there and everything got washed away. But, yeah, this canyon's meant a lot. You know, my... Um, my great uncle was just born up there on the ridge, just right behind this place. And so was my, uh, my aunt, one of my great aunts. You know, I mean, this is just old family territory, pretty much. It still amazes me when I look at these pictures. I, I just cannot believe that entire mountain, those, all those sidewalls. Are nothing but old hydraulic tailings. I didn't have any idea of the amount of damage that the hydraulic miners did back in the days when we were actually working down here. It wasn't, you know, for years when I started looking all over the place, like, you know, all the choked up uh, um, canyons, like at Molokov and all over the place, that were just so incredibly choked with cobbles, like this one here. You know, you're, you're talking 150 feet high. 200 feet high in spots of just tailings. Imagine, you know, running a sluice box and having a 200 foot tall stack of tailings coming out the back of it. And that's how a lot of them were. Even there up at Emmerich Gap and stuff, they would run the, the hydraulic tailings, you know, off the side of the mountain 
and it would fill the canyon below, and they would have to move the sluice box. Just incredible amounts of tailings. Yeah, you look, you can see right here that the belt is actually off the, t off the uh, gas compressor. And that black uh, garden hose, yeah, I still use that black garden hose today on the smaller dredges. I've got a black fire hose on the, on the larger dredges that works out really well. The bigger the hose you have for washing material, the better off you are and the, you know, the more you can wash downstream. Yeah, it's kind of funny, you know, you sit here and you look at this, it's like, wow, the hole doesn't look like it's getting any bigger. Well, we were shoveling tailings and shoveling tailings and shoveling tailings constantly. So it really doesn't look like we're doing a whole lot, but really there was enough work there for two people all the time. You had to have two people because one person was pretty much constantly shoveling. And right here, we actually got a plug up in the hose. And uh, Arkansas Steve uh, hit it a couple times with the rock and beat it out. But, yeah, we didn't get too many plug-ups. But, you know, that's one thing about running in complete and total black water that I call it is uh, you're running blind. You don't know what's going up the pipes. We always ran with at least one finger, usually like with me, my left index finger and the middle finger together inside the end of the nozzle right in the tip. So you could feel what was going to go in there beforehand and you could stop it and pull the, uh, the bigger rocks off, you know. Plus it would give it just that little bit extra room with your fingers in there to where you know with the gloves on that you could stop a plug up from happening so we didn't plug it up too much and you got to realize we're just down there looking around and talking because you can't see in the water i mean look at tom's hands there you can't even see as soon as it hits below the water that's it this is another set of pictures that arkansas steve had taken so we're going back here first we go to the two and a half and then we're going to go right back up to the four inch here in a few minutes. Um, this is all the same time, but we just had two different cameras. And that's looking up at the falls. This is the end of the year now. This is the very last time we went down. And uh, Arkansas Steve took the pictures um, with his camera, and this, these are his, like I said. And so, yeah, this, was, this is the end of the year. This is... Uh, <laughs> This was actually the end of September because we ended up spending all of October down at the American Bar claim, pulling dredges out because we had dredges downstream and it took us, you know, a whole day to bring up a four inch pro line from like two or three miles downstream. We hiked it all out with wheelbarrows and uh, my niece and nephew went with me and we took the wheelbarrow and we just, it was the exact same four inch pro line that we have here. Except that it was one of those god-awful orange floats. We spent all day packing the entire thing back up to the canoe so we could then take it across the channel and get it back out. And that was, you know, we spent a lot of October over there on that claim. Because the water was getting so low here to where everything was starting to dry up, there wasn't a whole lot you could do. And which and that's the thing, it dries up towards the end of the year every year where you have no water down here. That's a pretty neat shot where it shows Tom throwing the water and the rock. And there's another one. Arkansas Steve, he's a good photographer. He got some good got some good shots there. Well, and that's about it for this video series. This was 2003. Let's look at some gold here. Now, first of all, you got to look at this and the vial on the lower left with the mercury in it. That's what we got in 2003, along with the next vial over with the nuggets. And if you look above that, you see that brown vial. Well, what is that? Well, what that is, is what I call nugget shake. And that's what came out of the, off the nuggets that were trapped in mercury that we would uh, clean with nitric acid. And when it got done, the, what came off there was that brown muck, which was mostly gold. It was probably two-thirds gold than one third of other minerals like silver and copper and so on and so forth. And uh, so that's what we did. When we got the, the mercury to the left is all fines that we hadn't cleaned yet. And I just left it in there to show people. The stuff to the right of that is the nuggets that we cleaned with nitric acid. And right above that is the nugget shake, which is the super fines that came off the nuggets after we cleaned them. And then what we did, we'd take them and we'd make buttons out of them. And so 
eventually, this is after two, this is after 2004, we took uh, three ounces of that nugget shake, and that's what we got. We got the two one ounce buttons there. There actually one was 1.1 ounce, and the other one was uh, I think it was around an ounce and a half. And hey, you know what? This is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video series for 2003. Well, I'm not gold mining again. It's a nasty looking day out there. It's been raining and the water is really high. I just thought I'd do a little check and I came down to the Roseville Rock Rollers Gem and Mineral Show today. And this is where I'm at right now. And I picked up this nice little geode right here for two bucks. Couldn't go wrong.